Hi, I'm Dustin with Pro AV School. In this video, I'm going to show you how I use ChatGPT to help generate a Python mock server so that I could test a Creston module that I was developing. So let's jump in here. First of all, I'm controlling a Telvic Cocon microphone unit, like a conference unit. But this video is not about the actual device, and it's also not about the c -sharp module that I ultimately developed. What we used to do is use Google to look up stuff, but with ChatGPT, honestly, I just asked it. I said, I have a device that requires long polling in its API. Is there a way I can emulate this device to make sure my application works correctly? That's exactly what I just explained that I'm trying to do. And it said, yes, you can emulate it by creating a mock server with a tool like Postman, which I've used before, or Python, which I have used once or twice before, but I don't really understand how Python works. I just know that it's an interpreted and not compiled language, meaning it's basically at runtime, it executes the commands. So here's how you can do it with Python. It gave me an example and it tells me how I can run it. And I said, okay, can you, can you modify so that it runs an internal counter so that I can see a different count every time I hit it. And it does that. And then I asked the uh, stupid question is, how do I run this on a Windows PC? Because I didn't really know. So install Python, install Flask. Um, sometimes ChatGPT will stall out. So I just said, can you complete that? Because it kind of stopped. Okay, it continues, install Flask, create the Python script. It, it tells you what to do. So let's just show you what that looks like. I got, I have my command prompt here, and this is the first example, this is the first example program. So I just go python mock1.py. Says that this is what I can connect to at, and I will open up a web browser and hit that endpoint, which I've already got in here, port 5000. And it did the five second pause. That's how the long polling basically works. So if I try my second version, refresh that, and this will show that count. It still has the five second delay. Every time you hit it though, you'll get another count. And then I just kept asking it more questions to basically develop what I needed it to do. Can I modify to show received data on the console? And that basically gives you some query parameters. I thought that might be handy to basically see them over here as I'm kind of debugging my code. It also helps you with problems. I said, it stopped replying to my request and it told me to change some stuff around and kind of kept modifying it. How do I accept connections from external computers? That's basically, I want my Crestron processor to be able to talk to it, not just local host on this machine. It tells me how to do that and incorporates that. So then this is the big ask. So I need this Python script to do a bit more. Here's the latest code, which is what it gave me. And I will send the initial things I need in a new request. I formatted it that way just so that it was easier to ask the question. This is everything that it told me to do so far. And then it says, got it, whatever, feel free to ask me what you want. And I have this, and this came from this API document of different things that I need to test. So when the client connects with slash connect, I need to return this. Subsequently, I want to go here to do polling. Should wait one second and give the time. And that's just a way for me to test. The time is not actually part of this. And it does all that stuff. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like. That I believe is Mach 4. Control C that, I'll run Mach 4. And now you'll see it's accepting connections from external as well. I can still hit that polling, but what I wanna do is hit connect. That returns that identifier. Then I can go to my second endpoint, which is slash notification. I've already got that typed in, slash ID equals, and that's the GUID that we had there. And then this is where it shows me the time on every subsequent refresh. 
So this is basically what I used to test the mechanism of my C sharp code to make sure that it was working fine. I went through and added more stuff. It helped me with reformatting things once I actually had connected to the device and noticed that the responses were a bit different than expected. I added more stuff and came up with basically this end result. And again, it's not about the code. It's not about what it specifically does, but I asked it to track some microphone states, return them in an array. And I just asked it conversationally like this, and this is what I built. And I think you can do this too. It's not gonna work for every single scenario. It's gonna have problems if you're doing stuff that requires encryption and SSL and shared keys and stuff like that. Some of those devices will respond differently and you want your test to be as close as possible to the real world scenario just for easier testing. But for stuff with a more simple protocol, this is a really easy way to mock it up. And you might find other things that it helps you with too. I've used it for C-sharp code to kind of mock up different classes. I've also used it a little bit for simple plus, but there's not a ton of simple plus out there that ChatGPT knows about. So I wouldn't really say it's that great for that. Anyways, I hope this gave you some ideas. If you like this video, please like it here on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, and I'm gonna be doing more videos that basically help you become a better AV programmer, a better AV tech, and a better AV integrator. See you again.